the pillar of all religions. Now, as you are looking at this pillar, which is almost being worshipped by the ancient Kemites, is because of a very special reason. Because this is our own spinal column. And as you know, right in the beginning of Genesis, a tree appears. In fact, they said two trees. But these two trees are simply one tree. But what they are talking about is polarization. On top of the tree is the tree of life. At the bottom of the tree is the tree of death or the tree of good and evil. And so for one to reach Eden, or for one to reach their father and mother, divine father and mother that is, they had to honor mother and father, which never dealt with your physical or earthly mother and father. If you go to Egypt, ancient Egypt that is, you have Osiris and Isis. If you go to India, it's the same. And if you go to Islam, though you don't see it, it's the same. The moon crescent that they show with a star. If you look closely, you see it is also the sun, the moon, and the star. These are always the Trinity. The Trinity has always been there. The problem is, in Christianity, they remove the feminine aspect of our Father and turned her into a dove. So whenever you look for God and the Son, or most of the time you see God and Jesus in an image, but then the mother is missing, but you see a dove. And so this religion became male-dominated religion. And so, if you look at the ancient Kemetic story, your father and mother that created Heru or Horus. But in Christianity, you have God taking another man's wife, a virgin, and impregnating her. Why they did this is a mystery to me. And so for us to understand, this central column or this pillar is all about you and I, how we are sent to Eden as spoken of in the Bible. In Genesis. Because the two trees are one. When you free yourself from the material world. You are living. From the tree of life. 
when you are enjoying this world you are living at the realm of the tree of good and evil it's very simple this whole thing is very simple And so the human being has a right to live as he wishes. If we can make the creator happy, the birds, the monkeys will make him happy. No scripture in this world speaks of your physicality. It is always dealing with the soul which is the third aspect of the trinity father mother and son so you have the sun the moon and the star in islam you have it in ancient kemet you have it in india same system so in christianity they have something called the, the gregorian chants Although most people will criticize the Hindus or in Buddhism for having chants, the Gregorian chants are designed for you to sing, but to sing a certain way that when you are not abusing the sexual energy, will raise up the Kundalini energy. So you have to ask yourself, why is it that the fathers and the mothers are told not to enjoy the sexual orgasm? Is it because they simply hate sex? Or are they doing it for a reason? Because these are all secrets that are not given to many people. Because if you are not enjoying the sexual orgasm, then these chants, which are designed to create a certain kind of vibration within you, will raise the Kundalini force. Isn't it interesting how you are told, be as wise as serpents and as humble as doves the serpentine energy which is a kundalini energy is a very wise energy the dove is also an aspect of the holy spirit as we just discussed when you have the father and the son the third aspect which is the mother or the second aspect which is the mother is removed that has now become a dove in christianity a dove descends on Jesus after baptism. This dove and the serpent are the same thing. And so I believe what we have shared on this platform is enough for anyone who is seeking knowledge to understand what is required to perform the great work and we must always say this to people because nobody has to practice mysticism or you don't have to be a mystic because of all the initiations the initiation of the mind is the most important to try and raise the kundalini force is simply for those who want to understand or taste the kingdom of heaven whilst they are living but if you are living if you are living righteously then most people don't have to worry about activating the kundalini force within them it is very simple And so it's not like you have to force yourself to awaken the Kundalini energy within you. 
because that was the path of the priest and we know we are not all priests because in ancient times it was the priest that dedicated himself or herself to receive knowledge those of you who have read the, um, the Hermetica, the lost wisdom of the pharaohs or perhaps listen to it on YouTube Dawuti he said through mind he left his body and Atum asked him to make his questions conscious and all was revealed to him so through mind so mind is a great tool for all of us if your mind is right then you are on the right path you don't have to worry about awakening no kundalini it's how you live your life that matters and so this pillar with the four columns on it which is the four elements the ancient mystics understood what it can do for you and I but we now live in a world where most people are utterly confused and so he can barely explain these things to them and so there is no two trees in any garden but one tree but we are talking about polarization if you are dealing with the, the, the bottom part of the tree then basically you are dealing with the tail of the devil which is always pointing downwards upward tree when you are talking about the upwards journey you are talking about ascension basically and so i'm going to leave this podcast Peace.